I was assigned to the Google Brain team and I consist like work with the Google Brain team as well but I also ended up working with the robotics team within Google Brain. Their residency program, the applications kind of open up I think around December or January and it's a very flexible program it's not designed for anybody particular like it's not specifically for people who have bachelor's masters or even doctorates it's mm-hmm. um, it caters to a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds and the main aim of the program is to do machine learning research but this is an extremely competitive program so a lot of people from around the world apply for this so i think this is closer to a full time job at google um we are paid almost the same way as a full time employee um so i mean they don't give you residence but i mean they pay you enough to have your own residence and everything um okay. so one of the perks that i really like is that since this is a research oriented program so they actually let you travel to conferences um the leading What? conferences yeah um So if you are submitting a paper and it gets accepted there then everything's of course funded but even if you are not accepted into the conference then you can still travel and attend the conference and hear the hear about the leading research in the field yeah you can do that once every year here i entered it was 12 year 12 month program which you could extend for another year mm-hmm. um but these these are sort of dynamic changes so no for the next year it was an 18 month program which you could also extend for a bit so the reasoning for this was that since it is a research oriented program um, people often felt that 12 months was not sufficient to actually make a credible research okay. contribution or like it takes time to like settle in and find the right project and then like work on it so um, that is why they extended the program and they also have the option to extend within the program so i remember applying for this program around January in 2018 i think and um yeah so the first round is basically you have a cv submission and then i think they also get a letter of recommendation from one of your advisors or people you have worked with so again like this is a research oriented program so it's probably better to get into uh get it from a research uh, advisor as well so in technically this program is caters to undergraduates as well so people who may not have extensive machine learning research experience for example but they do prefer people uh like i mean that's technical requirement but i mean in the end it's really competitive so they do end up preferring students who have some background in machine learning research experience so from my own application i cannot of course like be 100% sure i wasn't on the committee that was hiring me uh but having said that i am do think like two things which were important were first um i think i uh, my gpa played a pretty good role so i taken a lot of course work in machine learning research as well there is a first round which goes into competitive programming or like just basic algorithmic programming which has nothing to do with machine learning it's essentially to test out your programming skills and that you can program at a level of um, the co- company uh so I think this is fairly standard this is nothing um different from other software engineering interviews uh, they're not going to ask you to code in a specific language it's mostly about pseudo code and you have to walk them through the what about what you're thinking what the right solution is and you can talk with them it's a 45 minute interview and after that um they actually invite you on site um Bye. yeah once you've cleared that and once everything has passed through Uh, they invite uh-huh. you on site for a couple more interviews these two interviews were not your average software engineering interviews these were focused on machine learning itself and um and this again varies a lot for different people i can only uh, tell you my own experience so uh, the first round of the interviews were um machine learning questions but they weren't like typical questions that you would encounter on websites or anything like that they were actually testing the fundamentals So mm-hmm. I remember like my interview was also like the in some ways like asking me questions which were about these nuanced details about algorithms and stuff and they like 
he was also like trying to guide me to the solution as well but it's a really interesting interview i would say the second interview for me was about the research and the projects that done at the time so and the other interviewer went into deep details about my projects itself so you really should know what you have done and like the details but you also need to be able to tell very concisely what your project is about because it's a short interview you cannot go into hours and hours about what your project is so mm-hmm. you actually need to know your projects concisely and then they ask you questions based on that and then they try to understand uh, actually that's it for campus placements mm-hmm. uh, but honestly i was not very intent on it like you actually do not know any of the results at the time so it's advisable to sit for the campus placements um but my main target was like either to go for a masters or phd program or like for one of these residencies uh i think it's just slightly different than the campus interviews for sure um so specifically i think the first round which i described um for the technical programming part was fairly similar to what you would experience in the campus interviews but the mm-hmm. other two rounds were not similar to like any of the interviews i gave on campus how you would go preparing about it i think first uh step would be to actually do your machine learning fundamental courses uh that that's what worked for me uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 not necessarily about being able to program uh okay. the machine learning algorithm or knowing your libraries uh like mm-hmm. tensorflow or pytorch or any of those stuff but it's actually about knowing what goes on behind those algorithms and understanding those details so that's of course one thing and since they talked about my research as well so like i mean the projects you choose to do um are mm-hmm. also fairly important so in my case for example i had some experience with deep learning research um especially what i did in montreal and then i had some like um familiarity with optimization algorithms for example uh so they really dug deep into the details of those projects but yeah i would also suggest like doing the right projects in some sense like choosing the right topics topics which might be relevant or which they consider relevant for example deep learning research is a great topic to research on it's really hot right now and then actually spending time like understanding what's going on what problems you face for example and what solutions you come up with so i think those things are really important especially like um it's really flexible so i was assigned to the google brain team and i consist like worked with the google brain team as well but i also ended up working with the robotics team within google brain so it's really flexible uh about the structure of the program so the way it works is you come in and there's a one month orientation effectively where you're familiarized with uh the tools you'll be using there's no coursework or any such stuff uh but you're definitely like given some time to get yourself familiar because google has a lot of internal tools for infrastructure and how you write code and how you run jobs so you kind of have to familiarize or familiarize yourself with those details um and how you do that is you actually choose a mini project so um the aim is to like replicate a paper or a research paper that already exists so you go into the details of the paper and try to write the record and like reproduce the results and the aim is to like familiarize yourself and during that one month different researchers in the team also like tell you about the projects they are working on and then you can talk to them and like find your interest what do you want to work on you can reach out to anybody get a coffee with anybody and then just like talk about the project so when i first came to the air evidence i was really interested in reinforcement learning which is a specific problem within machine learning um it has a lot of applications itself but one of the prominent applications of reinforcement learning is robotics so i worked in this specific um a problem called like unsupervised reinforcement learning um and i mean i've worked on multiple projects but this is probably one of the highlights of my research at google brain um so essentially the idea is that when you're trying to teach robots to do things um for example you're trying to teach your robot to walk forward or walk mm-hmm. backward there is a very tedious engineering process that goes behind it where you have to construct some reward functions um mm-hmm. which kind of tell you oh this action is good so reinforcement learning is all about like 
um, taking some actions and then trying to decide which actions were good or which actions were not. And designing the reward function and implementing them on robots is really hard. Uh, so a really interesting subfield within this is that you try to teach robots without any explicit rewards and mm-hmm. uh, it kind of dives into these ideas about oh what am i curious about what do i want to know about the rest of the world or um uh, like oh can i predict what will happen if i do this so mm-hmm. if you if it's so the ideas in unsupervised learning can be like you can apply these ideas and then like design some reward functions and like the end product of my research was that we could teach a robot how to walk in different directions it can reach any goal but it was never like designed by humans so uh yeah so we left the robot to like um yeah for a few hours and then like it would walk around my personal goal is not to convert into a full like a job at google brain but Uh, you're definitely more eligible than other people because you're familiar with the people inside you're familiar with the infrastructure inside you've already like delivered some results probably so they're definitely uh, but having said that it's not a guarantee like you still have to like interview and work really hard to get into like but it definitely makes it easier so for me the crisis affected me because i i'm supposed to transition to a phd program in stanford so i did want to get an f1 visa uh at some point but unfortunately like the embassies are closed in india due to covid-19 and um uh, i cannot get a visa at this point so i had to like defer my stanford offer um by a quarter so i will try and join uh in january um otherwise for the specific program no uh i was already in the us and uh my program doesn't get invalid or anything i'm on a j1 visa for the personal experience it was mostly research experience uh but i wouldn't say that's necessarily like what like you can still apply and get in if you have done company internships as well i mean it makes it easier because if you've done more research then there's more to talk about and then they can like get more excited by your application but um it's not necessary Uh, for my internships though like my research even in undergraduate and my internships were focused on machine learning so i definitely think it's a great opportunity like to be in a residency program uh yeah. it looks good on your resume even when you're like done and obviously it's a competitive program you've worked with like great people and done like amazing stuff so yeah. it's definitely a boost no way it's like a downside i would say uh but having said that like um i think it really depends upon what you want to do um if you do want to transition okay. to the us for example uh and get a job here it might make it slightly easier i mean but there'll always be issues with visas for example uh so like i mean just be prepared for that um yeah i mean overall i would say like it depends upon what work you're getting and like what you're comparing to as well um the harder choice i would say is between like uh if you want to go for a masters right after or like doing this residency program and that's where like a lot of other logistical issues i think come in